Welcome back to Duckman Cycles VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with another exciting edition of my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle, also known as Eleanor. That's right, I'm inside the engine compartment right now, right behind that deck lid. Yes, yeah, so what do you think of that? Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, we're back today. We're going to do a little more welding on the body of this car. For those of you that are just tuning in for the first time to this channel, you're going to realize that this car is a chop top. It's a 1956 Volkswagen Beetle. That's a lot of unoriginal stuff on it. Unfortunately, the car broke in half after being left out for 10 years after Hurricane Ivan soaked it under six feet of seawater for a couple days. So, total disaster, total disaster. The car just, it, it collapsed under its own weight and uh, it just fell apart. So I cut it into pieces and rebuilt it the best I could. And what we got is we've got a chop top Volkswagen Beetle. So I'm gonna hop out of here and we're gonna go around the car and we're gonna show you some spots that we're gonna weld in here. And we're gonna see what kind of progress we can make today before the sun goes down. Thanks much for watching. Here comes the intro. Boop. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We got a lot going on this week. I figured I'd give you a quick preview of what's going on. Now, one of the first things I want to talk about is I have been called out by a, another YouTuber who also builds mini bikes, very similar to the Doodle Bastard that you see way back there in the background. I guess it's behind my hand here. Anyways, he's going to be building a bike that's very similar to it, but with more horsepower, and he wants to see if he can go faster. We're going to do a video about that, but that's going to be a separate video update entirely, so watch out for that one. I've also been away for about a week, and you may not have realized it, but uh, I went to go see my dad and visit my brother. And uh, during that time, I got to visit Volkswagen Planet. So that's right, I took a trip to Volkswagen Planet and uh, did a little video over there, so there'll be a video about that coming up too. And the last thing, and uh, as soon as I return home from my trip, and I mean as soon as I return home from my trip, I got contacted by somebody, and somebody reached way out of their busy schedule to talk to me for about two and a half hours on the phone about my Kaffir Brace Truss Bar. And it happens to be the guy who I bought it from and his company. I learned last week after I got back from my vacation that my YouTube has much more exposure and much more reach than I ever expected it to. And uh, we had a very, very long discussion about um, a lot of things. Everything from product review to customer service to, to life experiences to customer horror stories. I mean, we had a very, very good discussion. And I'm going to be pushing that in another video also. And uh, some of my biased opinions that I had mentioned about this before and, and my unhappiness with the, the whole result, we're going to flip that upside down and we're, we're going to have to put in a retraction on that. So there'll be a separate video for that also coming up, probably in the next week. So watch out for that too. And this time I'm not kidding, but we're actually going to roll that intro. So thanks for watching. Boom. All right, we're back, and we've got Eleanor right here behind me, and I've got to do some welding on it. And some of the things that need to be welded is some of the areas around the deck lid here where I put together a couple pieces of different cars, and you can see the line here that needs to be welded together. This is very haphazardly welded together. This was done with a cheap Chinese welder. That unfortunately wasn't very good at all and blew a lot of holes through it, and I also did it in a hurry to get to the car show last year, and I haven't bothered to fix it yet or do any grinding on it. So that's something that needs to be done. Same thing on this side. I need to run along this line and get this weld filled in here. And once that's done, and I almost completely forgot about that, I've got to fill in some holes over here. These guys here need to be filled in. I got a hole here I need to fill. This was actually a rust hole that somehow I missed it. And when I was doing some grinding and filing and cutting on the body, it actually, the rust just caved in. So I got to weld that and also and clean that up and close it. And lastly, over on the driver's side, and yes, I'm shooting through the passenger side, but I got to hit this area around the window here. And you can see how I very quickly threw that together for that car show. I just, uh, I wasn't going to get it done fast enough, and I knew that. So I still have to do some cutting and some trimming. I have to weld that, that gap shut and get that closed. And then along here where all these Clico pins are, that has to come out and get welded closed too. Now I'm hoping that I at least have this window done. Uh, that to me is, is a place I don't want to be. I don't want to have to weld on the inside of the car anymore. So I want to get done with that. Uh, it's just, this needs to be done. Once the inside is done, there's no reason why the body couldn't go back on the chassis. And then I could do the rest of the work on the outside of the car without any problems. But being inside the car, you know, at six foot three, 250 pounds, I'm just a little bit too big to be crawling around inside the car um, while it's on the body, trying to weld. Just impossible. I mean, it's not such a big deal if it's just a little something, 
but for this kind of welding I'm obviously going to spend a couple hours in here and uh, that's just not comfortable it's it's a difficult thing to do and I'm not going to put myself in that position so let's go ahead and get this thing patched up and uh, finish welding this thing together and uh, let's see how this turns out see where we're going to wind up at at the end of this video and hopefully we get a lot of this done before it gets dark and that's the trouble here usually I find myself working in the morning and then mid-afternoon I find myself so beat because I've been up so so early in the morning and I take a, a midday siesta with my lunch. You know, I get about a 30 minute nap, that's kind of nice. And when I say midday, I mean midday to me is, you know, like about 3 or 4 o'clock. So after 3 or 4 o'clock is usually when I find myself outside that I'm able to work on this car. And that's when the calls tend to slow down for a little while until I tend to get something uh, usually after dinner time. And remember, my calls usually happen at opposite of the schedules of restaurants. So if you have a breakfast rush, a lunch rush, and a dinner rush, usually my calls come after those. As soon as they get an opportunity to call their help center, that's when they would then call me in. So those are the, the opportunities that I have to work. And uh, so I guess you could say this is actually the second opportunity today, you know, after that lunch rush when the work isn't coming in. And uh, dinner is just about to start. So let's go ahead and see how much welding we can get done on this thing. And uh, I almost forgot I gotta fill that hole too. Yep, we gotta fill up that hole right there, that big, ugly, K-shaped hole. It's the K-hole, and not the fun kind of K-hole. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Let's go ahead and get the welder set up. Well, the temperature dropped and I suddenly smell rain. I don't see any, though. In fact, the sun is still shining in the area, but... Yeah, temperature just dropped dramatically and I'm starting to smell rain, but anyway... I went ahead and I welded along the bottom here. I got up underneath this here too. It's gonna to need some grinding yet. I still have to do a little cutting back here yet, so I really can't do too much welding until I cut that out. What I need to do is I need to tack it in and get a couple cuts made in here and then go ahead and cut off the excess and then weld the two pieces together. And I've mentioned this before. I take the two pieces and I sandwich them together and then I cut down between them so that way when they're cut off, they are exactly where they need to be and they'll weld together. It'll be a perfect butt weld. So anyways, that's where we're at. Um, hopefully, the weather will hold up. I'm gonna go check the radar. Anyway, whatever was going on with the rain, it seems to have uh, been to the west and to the north, and I just managed to catch a whiff of it. A nice temperature drop was a huge difference over here, though. It was about 90 before, and I'd say it's about 79 now. But what I've been doing is using my body saw here, which now needs a blade replacement. I've been cutting between these two layers because I just realized that I didn't weld this gap in. For some reason, I thought that was just a factory seam, but no, it's actually just a gap that I didn't weld. Oops. What I've done here is I've begun to cut along this line using that body cutter, and you can tell that these seam is perfect. These two pieces line up just absolutely perfect. And the reason why is because one piece is overlapping the other, and you can see I'm cutting right through, well actually not even cutting through both, I'm just cutting through the one using the other piece as a guide running right along that. And I've got a perfect seam over here to weld shut. I'm going to continue cutting away at that and then I'm going to try to weld that seam in also. We'll see where we wind up at. <laughs> he said semen. <laughs> okay, as I was cutting, I pulled that piece out of there. It's actually from the top layer. I cut into it a little bit here, a little wide. But right about here in the middle, it was actually nearly a perfect a perfect matchup. So it made two pieces. The second piece, well, you can see it in there. I have to kind of dig that out and then pull it out of there. And then I can finish up the weld on this. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of sanding to get this uh, Rust-Oleum paint off of here. I'm really glad I used that to stop this car from uh, rusting in the two years that it's been sitting around. But uh, yeah, I've gotta continue cleaning that up. So that way I have a surface to weld to. If I don't clean that, of course, I'm gonna get a real sloppy weld and a ton of burn through and just, yeah, not good. Let's go ahead and finish fishing that piece out of there, burn off some of the paint, and then get this thing welded together. There it is. Pulled it out, I kinda crumpled it up, but that's actually what came out of there. This is the, on the other side of this is actually the louvers, and I could see this piece on the inside, but it was way out of reach. So I just pulled this open, just like that, and then pried it on out of there. And it came right up, because it was a clean cut. All right, we're good to go with that. Clean off some of that paint. Let's get that welding done. I love this. It's raining everywhere but here. I never get that lucky. <laughs> Eleanor has seen more rain than uh, I would ever care for her to. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Ridiculous. There she is. Got a little bit done in here. And you don't want to weld a complete 
bead all the way across and you know without stopping and starting somewhere else because you might cause the panel to warp significantly in here I guess it probably wouldn't matter too much because you're really not going to see it but uh, still I hit here then I went over here then I went over here I'll probably go over here next and you know repeat back and forth but what's happening now is my light has come on which means it's getting dark out so I'm going to hit this as much as I can before we close out this video and let's see how much more of this I can kill before it gets too dark to actually see what I'm doing. Behind a welding mask, it gets incredibly dark. You can see because of all these seams exactly what was an original part and what wasn't. This was original. This was a replacement. This was original. This was a replacement. You can see all the seams as a result of those pieces being swapped out. In here is some of the things that I've done also to do a roof chop and that's where, where this cut actually came into play because I dropped the whole back end right there. Of course, I didn't drop the back quite so much as the front, but nonetheless, that's where one of the cuts was. Okay, I got as much done as I possibly could, and with the welding mask on, I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> so I think we're at a stopping point. The entire seam up there is, is filled. When I squeeze this, it feels a lot stronger than it did, and I, I can't believe I even forgot to weld that area in there. I mean, that's kind of a big deal, and I just forgot it. But it's done now. No longer an issue. I must pull these Clecos out, and uh, saw through this seam and fill that up just the same and then fill these holes. So that's next on the agenda. And then I also need to attack the holes that are up here in the B-pillar and I don't even know how much this camera can pick up here. Let's put it into uh, low level, low light mode rather. Let's see, that might brighten it up a little bit. On. There we go. That helped a little bit. But up here in the B-pillar area, right up in here I gotta fill that hole yet. There's a hole here. I also need to fill a hole in the A-pillar. It's right over here, real small one. Uh, this pillar, B pillar on this side is done, except for maybe a little bit of filling some of the, the holes that just the old welder didn't do a good job on. I'll come back and I'll grind that and then I'll just look at it one more time and look for pinholes and just run over it real quick. But uh, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good stopping point for tonight. So like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. Check out my other channels. Besides Duckman Cycles, we got VV the Duck VV. We also got Skeeter the Duck. And Skeeter's inside right now taking a nap. It's also been a long week for her. She's been traveling with me just the same. And you can see her over on my other channel in the trip video where I visited my dad on his birthday. You're going to want to check that out. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, if you want to email me, duckmancycles.duckshit.net. And if you want to visit my Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles and VW Garage, do a search for it on there. Join the group. There'll be a discussion of this project as well as others. Thanks so much for watching, and keep your duck if it's nice. <laughs>